desires to make us the vessel that he can use. And in making that vessel, we got to make sure that we're on the positive. we got to stay on the positive. So he can mold us, shape us, to a vessel that he can use. In the choir said, tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economies down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you for all you've done for me. Because sometimes the things that you've done for me can't be measured by money or by me. The fact that you allowed me to take a breath in and take another breath out. The fact that you allow, see somebody know what it's like. Oh, yeah. 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 Even in the midst of your tears, yes. you know that there's joy waiting on you. Oh, yeah. Joy not necessarily happiness, but joy that thing that keeps you stable. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. When you go through life's day to day, yeah. you know that there's someone watching over you. When the doctor's report isn't what you would hope it would be, it wouldn't necessarily look good, but God. <laughs> then Mr. Weed said he did it all by himself. God did it all by himself. If you listen to the words, he did it all. If you look up, you can see the sun staying where it is. Stars and the moon right where he put and he did that all by himself. If he can do that, what more can he do in your life? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come saying thank you, God. Lord God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for this opportunity to bless and praise your name, God. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to hear from you, God. Lord God, we ask that you condition our hearts, condition our minds, Lord God, to receive that which you have for us. For the, the fact that we're here today, Lord God, the fact that we are here today means you have something for us, God. Help us to tune our ears to yours, God. God, I ask that you move me out the way, God. Speak to it. Speak through me, Lord God. A word that I know uh, that you ordained, God. A word that will save someone. A word that will heal someone. A word that will deliver somebody. A word that will encourage the body of Christ. God, let us know that this is the acceptable time and that you're blessing us even now. And God, if you do these things for us, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise is in Jesus' name that we count kind of done. Amen. 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 We give glory and honor to our Heavenly Father. It's in Him that we live, move, and have our very being. Uh, to uh, everyone assembled here today, to the strangest home church family, whether you're in the sanctuary, whether you're uh, on uh, virtual, we just thank God for you. Amen. 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 We thank God for your faithfulness. We thank God uh, just for you in general. I thank God each and every day for you. God bless you. God bless you. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how, you know, God can bring back things to your remembrance. And I'm hoping I don't get in trouble, but when I saw Miss Washington walk through the door. Back into early, to, to the early 2000s, 2000, 2004, I think about Miss Washington, then I think about Brother Park. When I started teaching at Amanda Ilsen High School, they were there. Now, you never know how God works things out. But see, when I came there, I was freshly out of college. Um, first time teaching uh, in a full-time position, but they were there to mentor, they were there to encourage, and they may not realize it, but just the, the, the words that they take up, the time, how it can impact and how it can bless you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I look around, here we are now, and here I am as pastor. Uh -huh. And what does that mean? That just lets us know that God can use us. It's all about doing this thing together. You see, that's what God wants us to, to do this journey. Not to be by ourselves, but to do what? Do it together.
together, not to tear down, but to do what? Build up, right? All for the kingdom, all for God's glory, amen. That makes me feel good. That makes me feel good because it lets me know that God's purposes are still. No matter what it looks like outside, no matter what's going on in the world today, God's plan is still going forward. Amen. But there's so much distraction. There's so much noise that tries to take us off focus of what's going on. Every day that you wake up, you turn the news on, you turn your TVs on, you turn your radio on, you, you get messages. It's a lot of negative stuff going on in the world today. And if you're not careful, it'll overshadow, it'll drown out the good that God is still doing. It'll drown out the fact that God is still in charge, that he's still working today. And we have to remember that uh, because the more that as time goes, I don't know about you, but it seems to me, in my short time living, it seems like there's so much going on uh, um, today. There are more people uh, leaving this earth. There's more violence. There seems to be more heartache. There seems to be more suffering. It just seems to me that it's, it's a lot going on. But guess what? There's always been things going on in the world. Yet yeah, still God is still in control. But we have to put ourselves in a position to allow God to do what he does. Amen. And um, it, it just made me, I couldn't get out of my mind last week's Sunday school lesson. Uh, um, Sunday school last week, it's always good, but it was, it was particularly uh, good because it was one of, uh, one of my favorite passages of scripture. And um, it just stuck with me all week. It stuck with me all week. And, um, and the Lord just, you know, just in his awesomeness just revealed uh, so much, even as we're continuing in our this, this series that we're going through now, um, stay light, stay living in truth every day. Um, understanding the truth of God requires leaning not on your own understanding, right? It, it requires getting to know who God is. It requires um, spending time with him. It requires allowing him to speak to us what he wants, right? His truth. The Bible says, Jesus said that I'm the way, and he said what? He's the what? The truth and the life. But it said that second thing, he said he is the truth, right? And so we have to stay living in truth every day. And when you live in truth, you stay like You stay like Heavy burdens, uh, you don't have to bear them. Why? Because God's, God is uh, uh, already prepared a way, right? Jesus said that we can exchange our yoke, exchange our burdens for his, because his are easy. They're like, he's already done the work. Yes, we have to take up our cross and carry him, but he never said we have to get on the cross and have hands and uh, uh, nails and stuff. He already took care of that, but we have to bear our burden. Right. But even in bearing our burdens, he said, I'll bear them for you. That's the kind of God that we serve. But even in doing so, if you're not careful, you're, if you're not careful, you will allow your burdens to take center stage. Mm -hmm. Even in your faith walk, even in your walk with God, uh, sometimes burdens can get too heavy. Right. Mm. They can distract you. Yeah. Sometimes life can happen and it can, it, it, it can cause you to turn your head off of the direction you're going. You haven't changed direction. You're still going the same way. You're still, uh, uh, for God I live, for God I die. But sometimes mm. something catches you off guard and you weren't expecting it. You're, your eyesight shifts. That's why that, that story about Peter walking on the water never gets old. There's always some truth in it. Because with everything going on in the world today, uh, another truth is that there are many people suffering silently. There are many people suffering silently, not silently in the sense that they're quiet. They may still be talking, still going from day to day, doing everything, but they're suffering silently in the sense, trying to do it all on their own. I love God. I, I trust God. I know he's going to take care of it. I just need to deal with it until then. And you're doing it all by yourself. You're trying to go out and do what God has called you to do while you're still dealing with whatever it is that you're dealing with. So you suffer silently. 
Maybe you feel like no one can hear you. Maybe you feel like no one is listening. Maybe, maybe you feel like someone should recognize, someone should know. And so you deal with it. Side. Maybe you're the encourager of the family. Maybe you're the backbone of the family. Maybe you're the one who's uh, always supposed to be strong, but you deal with it silently. And see, that's the truth. That's the truth. There's God's truth, but then what you're living in, you have to uh, uh, understand that, that, look, whatever you're going through is your reality. But it's not the end of the story. Yes, the word tells us God can take all things and work them together for good. But you've got to go to the next verse to even really get a great understanding of what he said in that verse. You've got to look at verse 29 of Romans 8 to see what Romans 8 and 28 is talking about. We'll get to that in a minute. But yes, we serve a God who can do all things. Yes, we can say, cast all your cares upon him. Who cares for you? But he doesn't want us to suffer silently. Yes, we'll have to go through some things, but he doesn't necessarily want you to go through them by yourself. Now, we live in a day and age, and it's not new stuff, but you can't tell everybody you're busy. Amen. You can't tell that because everybody that's around you isn't necessarily for you. Right. Everybody that's around you is not necessarily there. To everyone that's cheering you on uh, 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 in your face is not necessarily cheering you on behind your back. That's just the reality of it. How many people follow Jesus? How many people are the multitudes that, that he preached to, that he healed, that he delivered? But when he was on the cross, he was up there by himself. By himself. That's just the truth of the matter. And then there are those moments. But what does the word of God tell us about that? We have, we have to understand that no matter what, we're never alone. Never alone. He said he'll never leave you. He's always there. His plans for you will not stop because of what happens in your life. His plans for you will not be altered by your doings or someone else's doing. What the enemy is planning, his plans for you cannot be stopped. Only we can get in the way of God's plans for us if we choose not to follow him, to allow him, to direct his path. His word is true. His word doesn't change because of what somebody else said, what somebody else did, because of your past, because of what you're going through. The word of God doesn't change because of that. And God wants us to live in that truth every day because it's in that truth. The truth is not that you'll have every, that every day will be bright sunshine. That's not the truth. The truth is not when you give your life to Christ, you will never go through again. That's not the truth. But the truth is that no matter what you go through, there's somebody going through with you. No matter what situation you get in, there's somebody who will get in that situation with you. No matter, I don't care how hot the fire is. If God gets in there with you, you won't get burned. You won't get sinned. I don't care how, how, how the waters are rising around you. The word of God says you won't drown. It will not overtake you. No matter how heavy it gets, there's always, no matter how great the temptation, there's always an escape. That's the kind of, that's the truth. But sometimes that truth can get drowned out by your current situation. Because we think about many times what God tells us, we think they're, they're to happen in the future. Right? They're there to happen. This is going to happen for me when I get to a particular place. But look, when we're in the place of grace, that's what Romans tells us. We stand in the place of grace. Romans chapter 5. I'm going to encourage somebody on today. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about faith. We talked about faith. We talked about faith. The importance of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Right? You've got to have faith. And because of that, we have peace with God. We're no longer at war with God. We're on, uh, on the same team with God. It doesn't mean tranquility or calmness, but the word peace here means I'm no longer at odds with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here it is, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. 
Look, when you have faith in God, when you, you've accepted him, you're standing. You have access by faith into the grace where you're standing. You're standing in the place of grace. It doesn't matter where your feet are. It doesn't matter where you are. You're always in the place of God's riches at Christ's expense. It doesn't matter if you're at home, if you're at church, if you're at work, if you're at the store. You're in your place of grace. God's riches... At Christ's expense. It doesn't matter where you've gone. Christ already died for it. It doesn't matter what you've done. Christ has already died for it. He's already taken care of the situation. The word of God says, even while we were yes sinners, yeah. Christ died for us. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave it even before mom and daddy even thought about you. God had already thought about you. He had already planned a way for you. He'd already set some plans for you. What are God's plans? Well, the word of God tells us for us to be conformed into the image of his son. That's God's desire for us. So even as we live day to day, even as we go through our day to day, God doesn't want us to do it by our sins. He doesn't want the heavy burdens to weigh us down. But they're there to make us stronger. The Bible says that uh, you will have trials, you will have temptations, but they do have a purpose. God, has, Jesus has already overcome, right? Testing trials come to make you stronger and to, to build you up, to, to give you endurance, right? To build uh, uh, um, patience, and patience builds experience, which is character. It makes you a better person. Not, not a better person in the eyes of the world, but a better person in the eyes of God. Because his job, his goal, his desire is us to be more like his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? So we live in this truth every day. The truth is you're going to go through stuff. The truth is that um, one day you may be going through, but your neighbor's not going through. So when you're not going through, you need to be storing up prayers and praying for somebody else. Because yeah. you keep living, your time is sure oh, yeah. to come. You're going to need somebody to pray for you and encourage you. Right? But even as you're praying and encouraging, God is speaking to you and preparing you. Every day that you live, God wants to prepare you for what's to come. Oh, right. son, I'm a soldier, right? On the battlefield. Fighting for the Lord, right? But every soldier has to undergo some training. Every soldier has to have some preparation, right? And so God is preparing us. He's preparing us, right? Um, and in his preparation, uh, um, God's preparing me um, for what you can't handle right now, right? There's a song, one of my favorite songs. Uh, he's preparing me. I think Daryl Coley. Right? And in that preparing me, he's, it says he, he's pruning me. That means he's cutting away some stuff. See, preparing doesn't always mean uh, 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 that, that, that everything is, is going to feel good. Sometimes there's a cutting away. There's, there's some removing of some things. He's pruning me. He's purging me. He's taking things out that's not like his son. Why? Because his job is to conform us into his son's image, right? Because God is coming back. Jesus is coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He's coming back for uh, holy people, right? He, God calls us to be holy. God's grace and mercy does not cancel out his justice, does not cancel out his righteousness. God is still holy. He still can't be in the place of sin. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. And we believe by faith. He covers us with the blood. So that's good news. It's good news that no matter what you've done, no matter what you go through, there's always repentance. And repentance means I have a change of mind. I don't want to think like that. Change of heart. I don't want to feel that way. Change of life. I turn direction. <coughs> that's what God is coming back for. Jesus is coming back for. Not a building, but these temples. Know you not that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. That's why you're never alone. That's why you're never alone. And so the word of God teaches us that we need to live in this truth every day. Yes. Right? Now, what's the thing about silent suffering? If you're not careful, silent suffering can take on power of its own. It can take on a power of its own. If left unchecked, if left um, put to the side, it can take on a power of its own. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's pain, maybe it's heartache, maybe it's uh, 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 some, you lost something or lost someone.
someone and it's holding on to you. And you say, well, this is just something I have to live through. This is something I have to experience. Yet we have to live through it. But when we live in truth every day, there's, there's a truth that goes to everything that you go through. It's all in the word of God. And everything is meant to work towards your good. So, what happens with this silent suffering? It can distract us. Last Sunday, Miss Austin, Miss Austin, um, during Sunday school lesson, and I told her point play, I said, Miss Austin, I'm going to use that one day in the sermon. <laughs> she gave the illustration so plain, so clear. Miss Austin said, when you're driving down the road, you look ahead. Right? You have to keep your eyes on the road. Because common sense will tell us if we take our eyes off the road, you might run into something. Oh, yes. If you take your eyes off of the road, you might crash into something. You might swerve. You might, you might go veer off the road. You might hit someone. You may hurt somebody else. You have to keep your eyes on the road. You have to keep your eyes focused on the direction that you're going. If you take, and we all do it sometimes, we take our eyes off and look to the side and see somebody driving by that we think we know. We turn to the side and wave, but we put our eyes right back on the road. And sometimes we think, well, if I keep my eyes off the road too long, that's when the problem comes, but it only takes a split second. Sometimes we take our eyes off the road because of distraction. Maybe you have kids in the car. Maybe you're turning around to check on them. Maybe make the baby in the car seat coughs. So you want to turn around and make sure that the baby's okay and not choking on something or, or whatever. Maybe the kids are in the back seat arguing and, and you turn around and tell them they're distracting you. Whatever it is, distractions can come in all shapes and sizes. So you have to stay focused. If you take your eyes off, you can cause harm. Well, when we're following Jesus, same thing. We have to stay focused on him. And when you're focused on him, there comes times when distractions, whether good or bad, can cause you to take your eyes. You're still following him. But sometimes distractions can cause you to turn your head. Right? Look to the side. Right? Uh, 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 maybe, maybe, and every distraction is not bad. Maybe it's work. Maybe you're spending a lot of time at work. Maybe, maybe work is distracting you. Maybe, maybe family is distracting you. Maybe trying to give the best to your kids is distracting you. Maybe you have to uh, take care of loved ones. Maybe, maybe you're going through something. Maybe you're dealing with pain. Whatever it is, there are distractions. There are distractions. And if we're not careful, these distractions can take us off course. But what do you do when you're going through a storm? When you're going through uncharted waters and God told you to go that way? You mean God will tell me to go through trouble, trouble situations? You will lead me through, through troubled times? God, God, you will lead me uh, through storms? Uh, if you're leading me, God, can't you lead me around the storms? Can't you lead me around the trouble? Can't you lead me around? The truth is, sometimes God will lead you through tough, turbulent waters. How do we know? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want you. Please be, you know, go through the pasture, pass of righteousness, the steel waters, all the good stuff. Then you get to verse number four. Yea, no, I walk. Now he's still leading. Yea, no, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You mean God, you're going to lead me? Through some valley situations, through shadows of death. Look, the truth is, what do we focus on? Do you focus on the death or do you focus on the word shadow? There's shadows trying to block the light. How does a shadow form? If the light is shining, something stands in front of the light, a shadow is cast. So if you see shadows, it's trying to block the light. You're following, following God. You're following God. He is the light, right? You're following Him. Something tries to block, to get in the way of it. Pass a shadow. They go and walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil. Why? But thou art what? With me. With me. But sometimes in the story, we get stuck on the valley of the shadow of death. We get stuck there. And anytime you get stuck somewhere and you don't get, keep moving, you're going to stay in that place. Amen. 
You're going to stay in that place. So even though you're going through, yea, though I walk what? Through. You didn't say walk to stay. Walking through. Why? Because wherever God is leading us, it's got to be to a good place. If I'm following God, I know the end of the story. Why? Jesus died so that I can be with him, right? So wherever God is leading me, is leading me to be with him. I hear the Holy Spirit. God is taking us to a place he, he said he's going to be. Sometimes you go through your situations and you don't feel his presence. But if you're still following him by faith, the way he told you to go, he's going to end up being in the place where he called you to be. Amen. Where he told you to go, he's going to be there. Oh, yes. Right? Right. Neither will I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. Even when your enemies try to come at you, he said, I prepare a table in the presence. Don't stop going. Don't stop with your enemies. I'm going to prepare a table. They're going to be trying to come at you. But you go ahead and eat. I'm preparing a table for you. Eat the word. Eat the word. Feast on the word. Taste and see that the Lord is good. My word is true. That no matter what comes your way, I have something for it. The truth is, we have to go through our valley situations. And a valley is nothing but a low You have, and everything looks the same. You have whatever's in the front, the sides, all looks the same. But you're walking through, that's the truth. I have to go through it. I have to go through it to get to where God wants me to be. Why? Because when he takes us through places, the truth is he's able to take all things. Working together. He can even take your sickness. He can take, he can take your pain. He can take your suffering. And he can work it together. Amen. Good. He didn't say it was going to be good, but he is able. He can even take our mistakes. When we take it to him and repent, he can make them work together for our good. Amen. That's why we have to stay focused. And even if we take our eyes off, even if distractions come, put your eyes back on Jesus. Yes, Amen. Look at me real quick. I want us to look at this very familiar pastor, Matthew. Matthew, and, and we're, we're pretty much done. Matthew chapter 20, verse 14. Matthew 20, verse 14. Look at that verse 22. Look at that verse 22. Now, very familiar passage of scripture. Right? But I want us to look at, I want us to focus on a different part. All right? So it says, verse 22, the word of God says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Jesus told his disciples to do what? Get into a ship. And to do what? Go before him, go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away. So if he says, go before me, that means that even though you're going ahead of me, I'm going to be there with you. We're going to meet up at the same place, right? That's the truth of it. He sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. So, so there are times, sometimes on your journey, when you're going to have to separate yourself, you're going to have to get apart so you won't fall apart. Right? You have to get away from the people, you have to get away from the things, you have to get away from the ministry, you have to get away from and spend some time with God, some one-on-one -on -one time with God. <laughs> not with your brother, not with your husband, your children's father. It's sometimes you gotta get by yourself and, and commune with God. Because he has something for you, something to tell you, something to pour into you, something that'll strengthen you for what's to come. Because when they got to the other side, Jesus had been ministering. He had been ministering. When he gets to the other side, there's going to be something he's going to have to do that he's been waiting. So even Jesus didn't do it by himself. He went up and he prayed. He went to the mountain to get apart so he would fall apart. And the word said that when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Wait a minute. Jesus, you're all knowing. You know everything. God, you, you know it all. You're omniscient. You're omnipotent. You're everywhere. So you sent your disciples in a ship across this lake. Uh, uh, 
and, and there's, there's a storm going to come and you're leaving them there what seems to be by themselves. You see how when God tells you something, he said, get in the ship, go before me. In other words, I'm going to be with you on the other side. But while you're seemingly by yourself, right, a, 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 a storm comes. And, and, and you didn't prepare me and tell me that a storm was coming. So here I am out here in this storm. And the word says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. See, that's it right there. Look at verses 25 through 27. That's our focus. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Jesus was coming to them, but they didn't recognize. Because here comes Jesus, not in a way that they would expect. Maybe he would come in a boat, right? But here he comes, walking on water. He, he, he's walking on water. Yeah. was the spirit. Yeah. And they were afraid. Oh, no. oh, yeah. right? the two. And when the disciples saw the him, two. they were troubled. Right? Look at verse 27. The but straightly, oh, yeah. Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of oh, good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? They, they listened to Jesus. Did what he said. Ended up in a situation they weren't expecting that maybe could have cost them their life. Here comes Jesus and they're not sure if it's him. Listening to God, living God's way, living in truth, it's going to require us to change our lives. It's going to require us to change the way we live. It's going to require us to expect the unexpected. Why? The word tells us his ways are not like our ways. You expect God to do it like you would do it? That's not living in truth. The truth is, God's ways are not our ways. That's why we lean not on our own understanding, but we have to trust in Him. So if I try to lean on how I think it's going to be, I don't care how many times I've been through it, if I try to lean on my understanding, I'm not living in truth. I'm not living in truth. And the enemy wants us to live in lies. He wants us to live in lives because that's his playground. Right? And so he said, be of good cheer. It's I. Be not afraid. So look, living in truth every day. The truth is, look, sometimes, sometimes, the truth is that sometimes when you're in God's will, when you're in God's will, you will find yourself in troubled waters. That's the truth. Even when you're in God's will, you'll find yourself in some trouble. Water. See, that's what blessed me from Sunday school last week. And it's important to remember, look, you got to remember the whole story. Jesus told them to go across. When you do what God has called you to do, when you do his will, even when you end up in trouble, water, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Even when you get, on, get afraid. If the word said they were afraid, they were troubled. But Jesus said immediately, what? What did he say? Straight away. Be good cheer. It's me. It's me. Don't be afraid. See, he can even handle our fears. Yeah. He can handle whatever it is that frightens you. Right. He can handle it not to talk about you, not to make you condescend. You've been trusting me all this time. No. First thing he said, let me take care of you. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some chastising that comes sometimes. Yeah. 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 Read the scripture. Jesus chastised his disciples in love plenty of times. Right. But it was to strengthen. It wasn't to turn them away. And see, sometimes when, when, when troubled waters come, instead of turning to God, we turn away from God. Oh, yeah. We turn away from him because we, God can't be this. Why would God send me through this? Why would, why would, but look, we have to go through sometimes. Because there's a purpose for our pain, right? There's a purpose for our, when you give your life to Christ, your problems now have a purpose. Your, your problems now are on assignment. Because can't nothing, can't, I know it's bad, can't nothing happen to you 
Unless God allows it. Ask Job. Ask Job. God, God told him, Satan, Satan, looking around, whom he could devour. And God said, Have you considered my servant Job? God put him up on the chopping block. God put him up on the chopping block. But why? Because God knew that Job had in him uh, uh, what he needed to sustain. He knew that he could handle it. He knew. Now, it wasn't easy for Job. Read, read the story of Job. It wasn't easy, but there was a purpose. Look how many people are encouraged. See, what you go through, it doesn't just stop with you. Right. Everything that you experience in life, it has a greater purpose. God has a great, his purposes for us giving our lives to him are even greater than just us giving our lives to him. It's so that somebody else through us can be saved. Amen. But if I get saved and I live the life that doesn't draw but pushes people away, then I'm not living my purpose. If I'm turning, if, 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 if look, you, you have to let your light shine. But sometimes you let your light shine too bright that people can't see and they turn around. If the light's too bright, what do you do? You turn it. You can't, be, you, can't, you can't portray yourself too holy to where you can't. Right? Some of the Jews were too, too they were too, too religious to even want to spread the gospel to other Gentiles. To even believe that the word was for them. Right? So what does it mean? Being holy is not what you show other people. Being holy is a condition of the heart. Yeah. Being holy is a condition of the heart. Look, you, and, and, and what's working on the inside is going to show up on the outside. Yeah. But it's going to show up in a way that draws, not pushes away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we have to be holy. We have to do things. And, and the only way that we can be holy is if we allow the blood to cover us. Right. That's the only way we can do it without messing up self. <laughs> I messed up somebody said the right thing to you. You're going to remember some words that you used to say. <laughs> they might slip out. <clears throat> but look, look, look. I mean, that's the reality of it, right? But there comes a point when some of the things that you used to do, you don't do anything. You don't do them anymore. But here comes something else that God has to work on. The thing is, we have to get to him. Lord, help my mouth. Lord God, you know the words that I want to say. Because I know myself and I know you know everything. God, I submit my mouth to you. See, sometimes we continue living with that mouth. We know it's wrong. God, I, look, we'll say, God, I know I'm wrong. But we never submit it to you. There's a difference in acknowledging something and giving it to you. God, I need you to change. Change me. I don't want to be like I don't want to keep doing the same things over and over. God, change me because if I could change myself, I'd be all right. All right? But that's what God wants to do. You see, that's the truth. Look, the truth is he wants us to have a little faith. A little faith. Here they are, where God told them to be. I don't know, where did God tell you to be? What has God told you to do? And maybe what he's told you to do has led you to some places you didn't expect to be. Maybe it led you to some situations that you didn't expect to be in, and you got distracted. See, what happens, Peter heard his voice, and Peter with his impetuous self, look, Peter said, when Jesus spoke, the word of God says, my sheep hear my voice right now. Peter said, answered him and said, Lord, if you be like, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. This is in the midst of the storm. Peter had faith in the midst of the storm. The, you got to remember the storm is still going on. The waters are still tossing. But Peter was focused on their voice. He focused on Jesus. He said, Lord, if you tell me to come, I don't care what's going on. I'm not focused on what's going on around me. I hear your voice, and you're just consuming everything. So, God, if you tell me to come, I'm going to come. Jesus said, come. Peter stepped out of the boat. That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. He stepped out of the boat. And the word of God says, uh, 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 Peter uh, got down out of the ship. He walked on the water to do what? Go to Jesus. But this is what happens in our walk with Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was what? Afraid. Something else got his attention. See, he had the right intention. He had faith. Peter's faith didn't disappear, but Peter's faith did falter. 
Why did his faith falter? Because he took his eyes off Jesus. And when you take your eyes off of Jesus, when you take your eyes off of the word of God, when you take your eyes off of what God said and then focus on what the world said, when you focus on what's going on in the world, when you focus on your problems, when you focus, focus on your pain, focus on your situation, focus on your relationships, and it takes your eyes off of Jesus. That's why you got to have Jesus in everything. It's not about uh, uh, focusing on my family or focusing on God. It's about focusing on God in the center of my family. It's not about focusing on my job or focusing on God. It's about putting God in the midst of everything. And so when I focus on God, I'm focusing on the very things. that. I, that's why you got to put God in everything. You got to put God in your marriage. You got to put him in your marriage. Because every day is it's not going to be a smooth ride every day. It's not going to be a smooth ride every day. But when you focus on Jesus, he keeps you steady through it all. Right? You got to put them in the middle of your relationship with your children. Amen. You have to put them in. So you can focus on, when you're focusing on Him, you're focusing. That's why Jesus said, love God with everything that's in you. You got to focus on that three word, that three letter word, all. Oh. All your mind, all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. And then He said, love others. Those are the two greatest commandments. See, when you do that, when you put God first, you love people with a love that's not like your love. My grandma, my grandma used to say hydrogen love. That type of love that you turn on and off, you turn the hydrogen on, and hydrogen on and off outside. See, sometimes grandma says something about people love you with hydrogen love. See, but see, God's love is not hydrogen love. God, God's love loved us even while we were yet sinners. God's love loved us even before we loved Him. God's love is what draws us. So if I love people with God's love, I can't help but to love people the right way. I'm not going to love them the way I love them. I won't always understand them. But it's the way that God would do, right? So look, even when you go through stuff, there will be moments where you will be distracted. Don't beat yourself up. See, look, look at Peter. And say, Peter, how could you be distracted? And Jesus is right there in front of you. Well, Jesus has been right there in front of us through the pandemic. Jesus has been right there in front of us through racial injustice. Jesus has been right there in front of us through it all. Yes. But are we looking for him for the answer, or are we looking for the government for the answer? Some people are waiting on this stem to come this one. They started up in July, but the stem runs out. You have to be connected to the vine. You have to be connected to the vine through it all. Through it all, you still have to do it God's way. Because he never, when you're connected to the vine, when you're connected to the true vine, which is Jesus Christ, whatever flows through Jesus flows through. So Peter walked up on the water. He got distracted. Mm -hmm. He began to sink. He began to sink because he, his faith faltered. Mm -hmm. Look at the word. This is the encouragement. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, see, that's the shout right there. And immediately, yes. Jesus didn't wait. Yes. As soon as he cried out, and immediately, Jesus stretched forth. His hand. He didn't calm the storm. He didn't, calm, he didn't, he didn't rebuke the wind or, or, or the sea. Or, he didn't do any of that. He did what? He reached forth his hand, caught him, and said to him, Hold thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou die? When you stay focused on Christ, it doesn't matter what storm you go through. It doesn't matter what you experience. It doesn't matter what your parents go through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with with your children going through. It doesn't matter when God is in the middle of it. Why? Because he's able to do all of it. He's able to take it. We just have to have that strong faith. Yeah. Right? And it wasn't until they were coming to the ship that the wind ceased. That's when the wind, sometimes your storm is not going to be, Jesus will save you in the midst of your storm. The three Hebrew boys were in the fire, but Jesus saved them in the midst of the fire. That he was in the lion's den, but God saved him in the midst of the lion den. You're not always going to be saved from the situation. God won't always move the mountain. Maybe you give you the strength to climb. Yeah. They that wait on the Lord, he'll renew your strength. You'll mount up on wing as eagle. In other words, you'll fly higher. Yeah. And not just fly higher, but can't no other bird soar like the eagle. The eagle can fly so high to where the air is so thin that no other bird can fly that way. You will soar away. People, your enemies, they can't reach to where God is taking you. You just have to go all the way. 
You have to go all the way with Jesus. When you go all the way with Jesus, even those trying to pull you down, they can't stand the atmosphere that God has for you. Yeah. You wonder sometimes why your circle may get a little smaller. You understand why? Because everybody can't handle the altitude that God is taking you. But you go to the altitude, why? Because somebody is watching you. And they're going to say, you know what? If they're soaring on wings as eagles, maybe I can soar on wings as eagles. Amen. And see, that's when the right people start to join you. Other eagles fly with other eagles. It doesn't mean you forget about everybody else, but you're trying to get people. How do you do that? Bob said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all the That's what Jesus said. So be encouraged, people. I want to leave you with this. Romans 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So yes, all things work together for good to them that love God. But you gotta look, you have to look at verse 29. For whom, that, 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 that preposition for, right, gives justification to what was before. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to what? To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. God's purpose, even for the good stuff, for the bad stuff, goes way beyond what we could imagine. It's so that we can be conformed to the image of his son. Everything that you go through now has purpose to get you more and more like his son. Even the decisions that you made, the bad decisions, God can take those, make them work for your good. Why? Because he wants you to be more like his son. So when we live in that truth that no matter what you go through, God has the purpose of making you be more like his son, we're not worried about X, Y, and Z, what somebody else said, what somebody else said about it. No, God has a purpose, has a design for your unique self. You're unique. Can't nobody go through what you're going through. That's why sometimes you feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through because can't no one else handle what God allowed to come your way. He allowed it to come your way because he knew that with his help, that's the key plan, with his help, you could make it through. Amen. So we encourage y'all, like, no matter what you're going through, you can make it through yes. with the help of the Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I am. God is our refuge. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. He is our all in all. Yes. He can help you through whatever it is. No matter how big, no matter how small, he wants to help you through it all. All right. Will you allow him to do it? Will you allow him to do it? See, it requires submission. It requires submission. It requires to do something that we naturally don't want to do. It requires submitting to his will. Not my will. That's what Jesus prayed in the garden. Not my will. But God, with God, whatever your will is through this situation, God, I want you to get the glory. Can you say that about what you're going through? God, I want you, more than you bringing me out, God, I want you to get the glory in the midst of it. Can that be your prayer as you go through whatever? Because if God gets the glory, if Jesus gets the glory, you're going to get the glory too. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Not glorifying you, but glorifying the God that's working through you. Can you say that about what you're going through? Even if you're silently suffering, even if you know someone else silently suffering, can you say, God, I want you to get the glory through this? Because I, I live in the truth knowing that you want me to be like your son, Jesus. Therefore, everything that comes my way, good or bad, if I put it in your hands, I can believe by faith. Not by how it looks, but I believe by faith that you can work it together for my good. But it requires submitting. Submitting your will to the will of the Father. Yeah. God, I don't want to. I think I know how I want it to work out. I want it to work out in a way that feels good. But everything isn't going to feel good. It's not going to always feel good. Maybe you'll experience some loss in life. We're all going to experience loss. As long as you live, we're going to experience some loss. 
can't get, over, get past that point. But even in experiencing loss, God said, He's there with us. Even when we don't understand, God is there now with us. Will you allow Him to be there with you? Whether it's Him, whether it's him sending a friend, whether it's him sending another believer, someone to encourage him, will you allow him to be there for you? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, Lord God, help us to live in your truth. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the truth. You're the living truth. God, we thank you that your word, the very scriptures that we read in this Bible, we thank you that it's correct. God, we, we repent right now. But ever trying to do it on our own. God, help us to live in your truth. We understand that following you, there's going to be a lot of noise. Keep our eyes focused on you. And God, if we get distracted, help us to forgive ourselves because we know you'll forgive us and put our eyes, fix our focus back on you. Give us the courage to cry out, Lord, save me. And believe that you will reach down. No matter how, how far we may have fallen, God, you will you can reach down. Help us to know that through the storm, you're still there. Help us to know that there's no heartache that you're not acquainted with. You're acquainted with every grief, everything that we can go through. Show us how to let you in. Show us how to let you in. And we do so simply by calling on your name, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart. I accepted you alone. God, I want more of you in my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Help us to know you better than we've known you the day before. Today, help us to know you in a new way. And that new knowledge that we have of you, let it enter our hearts. And God, now I thank you for the peace. That even though when we open our eyes, situations may be the same, but what's different is now we turn it over to you. God, I thank you for peace. That you promise to guard the hearts and minds of your believers. God, I thank you for guarding the heart and mind of every believer in here. God, I thank you for guarding the hearts and minds of every believer in here. God, I thank you for guarding the hearts and the minds of every believer in here. Lord, God, I thank you that we're no longer.
God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we count it down. Thank you. 